In this clip, we will discuss how we can determine turbulent fluxes from gradients. In the context of the surface energy balance, those fluxes could be, for example, the sensible and latent heat flux. However, before we can do so, we first need to briefly discuss how we can obtain so-called similarity relationships for those vertical gradients. Those similarity relationships will provide us with the information about the shape of the vertical profiles in relation to the stability of the surface layer. Then the next step is to use those similarity relationships to obtain expressions for the vertical fluxes in terms of vertical gradients. We will do that both for neutral and non-neutral conditions. Once we have those expressions, we will discover how the turbulent diffusivity depends on height and stability. Our final aim is to find a way to determine the fluxes of sensible and latent heat flux from vertical gradients of temperature and humidity. The factor that connects the fluxes to the gradients is the turbulent diffusivity. We can write these equations in this way, but it doesn't tell us what the turbulent diffusivity actually looks like and what it depends on. So actually, the turbulent diffusivity is simply an hypothesis. Well, still, you could interpret the diffusivity as an efficiency of the transport mechanism. Given a certain gradient, how much flux is related to that gradient? Unfortunately, we cannot derive the relationship between the flux and the gradient from first principles. Therefore, we resort to so-called dimensional analysis. This method is widely used in science whenever problems are too complex, but we still want to make quantitative statements about nature. Dimensional analysis usually consists of four steps. First, we need to identify the relevant quantities. Sometimes this is easier said than done. On the other hand, when your list of relevant quantities is too short, you will discover that your results do not converge to a unique solution. And when your list is too long, you will discover that one or more variables do not influence results at all. Then, from your list of relevant quantities, you need to make dimensionless groups. That is, groups in which you multiply or divide your quantities such that the group as a whole is dimensionless. How to do that is beyond the present scope. But what is important is that when you only have one dimensionless group, that group should be constant. For the third step, you have to leave your desk, go out and do an experiment in which you measure all quantities that you identified in the first step. And then finally, with your observations, you return to your desk and you plot the relationships between the dimensions of the groups. If all went well, you will find a unique relationship. Here, we will use the vertical temperature gradient as an example. This in the end, should provide us with the information we need to determine the relationship between the heat flux and the vertical temperature gradient. What does the vertical temperature gradient depend on? Well, first on the surface heat flux. With a larger flux, you expect a larger vertical contrast. And when the heat flux would be negative, you would expect an increase of temperature with height, a positive gradient, rather than a decrease with height. Furthermore, the gradient may depend on height. Close to the surface, vertical temperature differences are usually larger than further away from the surface. Next, the vertical gradient will also depend on the amount of mixing, or in other words, on the intensity of turbulence. We have seen before that this intensity depends both on the production of turbulence by shear and on the production or destruction of turbulence by buoyancy. Now that our list of relevant quantities is complete, it is time to construct dimensionless groups. The first group is the dimensionless temperature gradient. In this group, the gradient is made dimensionless with the temperature scale theta star and height. The second group is Z over L, an indicator of stability. Here Z or Z is the height and L is the so-called Obukov length. For unstable conditions, st the stability indicator is negative, while for stable conditions, it is positive. For neutral conditions, Z over L is equal to zero. 
This particular set of variables and dimensionless groups that forms the basis for the analysis of turbulence in the atmospheric surface layer is called Moni Obukov Similarity Theory, or MOST in short. The next step in our dimensional analysis is to find the relationship between those dimensionless groups. However, before we can do that, we first need to do an experiment. The aim of the experiment is to measure the dimensionless groups under as many different conditions as possible. One of the first times that this was done, when the necessary equipment was just available, was in 1968 over the flat Kensens Prairie. To be sure that we can determine the necessary dimensionless groups, we have to make sure that our shopping list of variables to measure is complete. Our aim is that in the end we will be able to fill a plot with as many observations as possible to be ready for the next step. Will we be able to find a unique relationship between our dimensionless groups? Literature is full of different experiments and slightly different forms of those relationships, but overall they look quite similar. The functions are indicated with the Greek letter phi with a subscript indicating whether it is a function related to, for instance, the heat flux, subscript H, or momentum flux, subscript M. The left-hand side of these functions you interpret as phi is a function of Z over L. These functions are called the flux gradient relationships, or sometimes also stability functions. The functions have different forms for stable and unstable conditions. For unstable conditions, that is, negative values for z over l, the function has values less than 1. You can interpret that as, for a given amount of flux, you need a smaller vertical gradient than under neutral conditions. For stable conditions, the situation is reversed. The dimensionless gradient strongly increases with stability. Both functions nicely match at neutral conditions. For z over l equals 0, the function is equal to 1. You could interpret this situation as the reference situation to which you can compare both unstable and stable conditions. Now it is time to continue with our main aim, to determine the vertical flux of heat from the vertical temperature gradient. For this we will need of course the temperature gradient, but we also need information about how that vertical gradient is shaped by various conditions. To keep things simple, we will start with neutral conditions, so C over L equals zero. We start from separate expressions for the temperature gradient and the heat flux, and we will see that these expressions share some variables. We start with the dimensionless temperature gradient. From this we can derive an expression for the temperature scale theta star. The definition of this temperature scale contains the heat flux. So now we can derive an expression for the heat flux from it. Then we combine both to obtain an expression for the heat flux as a function of the vertical temperature gradient. We are nearly there. If we look back at how we assumed that there should be some kind of hypothetical turbulent diffusivity, we now see that we have an explicit expression for it. The turbulent diffusivity depends on the friction velocity, that is turbulence, and height above the surface. Now we continue with the more general case where stability can be either stable or unstable. The method that we follow is identical to what we did for neutral conditions. However, now the dimensionless gradient does depend on stability through the so-called phi functions or stability functions. This gives a somewhat more complex expression for theta star. Then we use the definition of theta star again to obtain an expression for the heat flux. And when we combine both, we get an expression that links the heat flux to the vertical temperature gradient, but now for any type of stability. We now see that the turbulent diffusivity does not only depend on the turbulence in terms of friction velocity and also height, but also on stability. Earlier we saw that the stability function phi is less than 1 for unstable conditions. From the expression for the turbulent diffusivity, we now can see that this implies that for unstable conditions, 
the turbulent diffusivity is larger than for neutral conditions. The reverse holds for stable conditions. A phi function is larger than 1, and as a consequence, the turbulent diffusivity for stable conditions is smaller than that for neutral conditions. So let's summarize what we did. Based on the book of similarity theory, we first set out to obtain a relationship between the dimensionless gradient and stability, the so-called flux gradient relationships. Next, we obtained an expression that showed how the heat flux is related to the vertical gradient. From this expression, we could infer an expression for the turbulent diffusivity and show how it depends on height and stability. This dependence matches well with what the observations tell us. Turbulent diffusivity is larger at greater heights, and turbulent diffusivity is larger during daytime and unstable conditions than during nighttime when the surface layer is stable.